Friday, Friday, Friday. It's the Whiskey Drive Quarterly Challenge. Do you like whiskey? Are you drunk on a Tuesday and not in college? It's time for a dry week. Yeah, you heard right. It's seven days of fucking sobriety, baby. Save your brain, liver, skin, bones, intestines, heart, immune system, and grasp on reality. It's almost like whiskey is bad for you or something. Ha! <laughs> I'm a guy in the comments and I say the dry week is dumb because I can quit anytime I want. Then do it with the rest of us and stop being a whip. Don't let your habits rule you. Take control. November 12th through 19th. Dry week. Do it unless you're scared. Or just do whatever you want. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am still wrecked. This is a gift from the trash titan, Brendan Kite. Daniel in the distance, Brendan there's Kite, a, he's got a whiskey it's, it's happening now. Yeah. We've done Blackened before, but we've not done the Cask Strength Limited Edition. I did not know they had a Cask Strength. They do! So what I remember from Black... Oh, wait, no. They do not have a Cask Strength Edition. What I remember from Blackened, this is Metallica. Mm -hmm. They did a uh, a whiskey with Dave Pickerel. Mm -hmm. Originally, uh, yeah. Yeah, when he was uh, still around. And they put together this in Are, terms of celebrity whiskeys. Yeah, I don't know. This wasn't. I don't know if it was Pickerel original. Well, the original black. What, no, no, was, no. That was um, uh, maybe Pickerel was involved already. But Rob Dietrich is the distiller who is working well, on this uh, one but with the him. But look it up. Uh, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. That, now that Pickerel's passed, then uh, it was Pickerel helped work for on the him. original black. And yeah. now the guy who's in charge of it is Rob Dietrich as right. a distiller at Smooth a uh, Sweet Amber. So I remember this being pretty rye. Or blender, I mean. Uh, was this uh, pretty rye heavy in the mash bill? Uh, I don't remember what the mash bill was, but it is uh, black. It's, fin it's a blend of bourbon and rye. Okay, yeah, but it's I'm thinking. It's a blend of things and then finished in black brandy. Casks. And then they think they play And they play music a curated Metallica playlist. To the aging of the barrels. And the funny thing is they now call that a proprietary black noise sonic enhancement. It's pretty funny. It's basically we play some music in there. Uh, so what I recall is <laughs> of the quote unquote celebrity whiskeys. Mm -hmm. We liked it. This was a respectable uh, entry in the world of celebrity whiskeys. What I liked most is uh, that. Sometimes it's, more than sometimes, often. A celebrity whiskey is clearly a money grab. Or they didn't spend a lot of time on the quality. Or even this, just though, this, though, this, though, yeah. I remember it was like, oh, it's pretty nice. What I like about it For is a I love that. For celebrity whiskey, that's surprisingly nice. Blend of things. Yeah. I like that they mixed rye and bourbon. Uh -huh. I like that they took that risk, and I like that they did some finishing with it. I like all the, the cool experiment of it. I get um, more ethanol than I remember, and then a yeah. vanilla char back there, a charred vanilla back there. It is, by the way, 113.07 proof. Okay. Yeah, that the barrel proof really just made that that ethanol layer shine. It didn't bring up the, the flavors as much as it did the alcohol on the nose for me. I'm getting not a cherry, but a raspberry mm. note in the, but it's like a, it's like an herbal raspberry, like potpourri, and er green garden herbs and raspberries. I get peanut dust and graham cracker. I can see the graham cracker. Yeah. And then that, it, but it's behind this curtain of ethanol. Oh. Sweet. I like that. It's more, It's a little more simple on the taste than I was it is. It's expecting one, from the nose. It's one cohesive note. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, but I do like that note. So it, it sort of just does this Ding, and then a slow open to the burn alcohol high proof finish. Mm -hmm. 
But it's not drama. There's no swooping or spikes or launches in any direction. It's just this land and just sort of unfurls like a like one of those the sea monkeys. You add water. <laughs> <laughs> just drop a little pellet in there. It turns into a just unfurls. Um, the yeah, the graham cracker still shows up on the taste. And it is almost a sweet tea with some honey mixed in there. We're definitely in American. Yeah, whiskey. but there's definitely, definitely an dessert. American whiskey flavors. Dessert candied sweetness. Yeah, the to sweetness that is that that almost sugary sweetness. To your point, is the front leading um, character of the whiskey as soon as you take a sip. And then I keep going back to the nose and finding more vanilla than I am on the taste. It's like a charred vanilla cream on the nose, and then I go I don't to the know taste if I'm and that as vanilla. Yeah, it's like. You know the, gosh, what's that type of cake called? Vanilla cream something. I don't know. And you got some walnut sprinkled on top. I, I mean, it's, to me, it's closer to like a coconut cream than a vanilla cream. A coconut cream? But it's not quite coconut. Because it's vanilla. No, but it's not pure vanilla. There's something else going on there cream. that like kind of derails it slightly. No, cream. cream and vanilla is in the same category. The cream and then the walnuts on that. Mmm, there it is. So that dryness of that walnut comes out on the palate with a little water added. It switches from being only sweet to being sweet with this kind of waxy walnut finish. So yesterday I was shooting with uh, a guy that's a tea professional. Mm -hmm. um, Sohan from a West China Tea House here in Austin. And uh, we were pouring him a few whiskeys. And to watch him sip and experience the whiskey, this was, I mean, just like take a seat because this is a very elaborate process. Mm. Apparently tea has so many subtle flavors, there's this tremendous slurping that happens. Yeah, you gotta do a lot more aggressive And then he, he throw, throws it around the mouth yeah. and then he goes, feeling like a rush of air. And the whole time his eyes are closed, right? And he is just 100% in the moment of that whiskey. Yeah. And I thought, man, if that seems like it would be absolutely the right way to really dive in and go deep. But Go ham into that whiskey. But the proof. But the proof on something like this. Yeah. That'll kick your ass. And then also if you're shooting content, like for half of the episode to be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he didn't uh, fry his palate with the second by the second he, glass. He was already uh, he enjoyed whiskey. He already okay. liked whiskey. Yeah. Okay. He he'd been around the block. So he knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this better without water added. So and it was it cask. It, the proof was in like the mid forties, so right. we weren't in cask. You like it with water? I like no, I like it without water. I added water; it's better without water. You know what? The more I drink this, the simpler mm -hmm. it becomes. I think that finish yeah. really just sort of like shrunk everything down to it, like a big quilt that just wrapped around yeah. the flavors, and yeah, nothing absolutely. kind of expands and unfolds. Yeah, I mean, like that Blanton's we had yesterday; it had all of this journey and unfurling. This one is just. Yeah, it's uh, you know what? It's um, what do you call it when you uh, wrap a baby up to keep them swaddle? Yeah, it's swaddled. <laughs> it's swaddled. This whiskey is swaddled. Um, I think so. The the celebrity whiskey scene. If you're a hardcore fan mm -hmm. of somebody, uh, and you buy their whiskey, this I think you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. If you like Metallica and you want to buy their whiskey, it's not a bad whiskey. Mm -mm. Uh, and in, in, within the spectrum of celebrity whiskeys, I think this again holds true as. A respectable entry in the world of celebrity whiskeys. In the I mean, broader world of whiskeys in general, eh, uh, it's, it's good. Like, yeah, it's good. Uh, I mean, it's no Conor McGregor whiskey. <laughs> What's uh, is the proper call? It's nice to be Irish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You give me a hundred million dollars, I'll give you that whiskey. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. Absolutely. I'll get my ass kicked by Khabib <laughs> and give you that whiskey. Uh, I saw a video. Oh, hi. About to get off on a tangent. Yeah. And I still will. Khabib, you know who this is? You don't do. Anyways, uh, most recently beat Conor McGregor. Or maybe he was two defeats ago. And it showed a picture of him and he was like, I don't know, 10 or less, maybe even five years old, wrestling a small bear in Russia. Of course, yeah. From, it was a circus bear. Of course he was. Yeah, and the bear was actually like getting his arms, like biting him and... He wasn't trying to kill him. Right. It was like the way the bears would try, like play fight. Right. And Kibi was pretty, this bear was clearly bigger than him. It was pretty funny to watch. But you have no reference point. No, I have no reference point. So for that. I'm just yeah. going to say this. I believe you. 
to crickets. Chirp, chirp, chirp. And then read comments now. Chirpity chirp, chirp. <laughs> the, uh, the whiskey nerd. Irish banknote. Another mysterious budget Irish whiskey I can't get in Ireland. Doesn't fill me with hope. Reminds me of the Prohibition, where bad whiskey was passed off as Irish, uh, and which re tanked the reputation of Irish whiskey. That's true. Uh, yeah. Learned about that when we were in Cork, Ireland. Yeah, well, yes. You learned about that when we were in Cork, <laughs> Ireland. <Sorry. laughs> I taught that for four years before we got to the Nobody point. listens, Daniel. <laughs> Nobody uh, listens. No, but here's the interesting thing I wanted to say with that. I do think that there's uh, both sides of this are kind of interesting because, yeah. one, that was actual fake bullshit made up alcohol that wasn't even whiskey right. put into an Irish label. Yeah. And it did trash the name of Irish whiskey and it wasn't anything. Well, so on, on one hand, this is at least real Irish whiskey. Yeah. On the other Talking hand, about Irish banknote. Yeah, on the other hand, there is a whole flood because of the lower regulations on sourcing Irish than there are on sourcing Scotch. Yeah. And so you can actually bring Irish in and then bottle it here. And I would love like that. to cherry pick some Irish and bring yeah. it in. Yeah. But because of that, it's a lot easier for people to bring in bulk totes of really young Irish source whiskey and then just bottle this out of it as Irish whiskey and put it on the shelf. And absolutely, like right now, yeah. if you go to the Irish whiskey shelf, it only represents like 10, 12 distilleries in a normal store here in Austin. Yeah. But it's like 70 brands. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a good half plus of them are coming from the same source, mm -hmm. varying ages and varying levels of blend and all proofed down to the floor. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, oh, it's hot. like at first you're like, oh, all these Irish options. Yeah. Well, then the more you look into there it, was, you realize it's like there's four Irish options. There was, there. There was just absolutely a contraction of the entire Irish whiskey scene. Yeah, right around so, the 60s. Um, in the States, I think recently we have had an explosion of craft. And I think there has been a lot more Irish distilleries starting to be established, mm -hmm. but it's not. But their distribution is small. Yeah, the distribution is small, and it's not the number, the volume that we have here in the and states. And what we get is usually from one of the bigger guys who are willing to source for private labeling for U.S. distribution. What was interesting about um, back during Prohibition, whenever the counterfeit whiskey mm -hmm. was just being slapped with an Irish label, uh, I think it was either Jameson or the Powers brand. They, would, they sent out to all the places, all the bars that sold their whiskey, this color chart. And they said, uh, hey. No, that was, uh, th there's about 30 years to separate those two things. Which was the color chart thing? The, the thing was, because like, there was which one of these whiskey. bottles most represents Irish whiskey to you? No, no, no. It was a counterfeit. Oh, you're talking about the counterfeit whiskey. Yes. Test this and see. And yes. Looks, Basically, hold up your this. bottle to this yeah, color. Yeah, it's okay. I you're and if it's about not this color, Jameson it's brand. not Jameson. Right. Yeah. So even the bartenders were like, I don't know. I mean, they just oh, sell them with the Jameson sure. label. I'm going to sell it. So if people could actually just hold it up to the light and tell. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still contracted and absolutely destroyed the industry. But it was true. They wanted Irish. I mean, you want, you only ape something people want. Yeah. So. Uh, S Man 7290. So what you're saying is. That's always a scary way to begin a sentence. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? <laughs> so what you're saying is that the ending of the Titans videos is the event horizon falling into the black hole that is the entrance to the journey of whiskey discovery. Damn, that's deep, man. You got it. <laughs> you got it. He, he's a smart one. It's the event horizon. Yes, of whiskey discovery. He got it. Here's <laughs> the fighting, stealing, and drinking. And if you fight me and fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver, sorry. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs>